Soaring is the act of extending the duration of your flight by flying in rising parcels of air. This is the goal of virtually all pilots who fly unpowered aircraft. To work a thermal, you generally fly circles within it. Thousands of words have been written about thermaling technique, but basically, it all boils down to this. You go where the lift is. In a little more detail, here's what you do. When you fly into a thermal, you will somehow detect the presence of lift and the fact that you are rising. It will either be a beeping on your Vario or you will visually notice the nearby terrain dropping from your view. You may also feel an upward tug as you initially accelerate upwards, although once you establish a constant climb rate, this upward pull disappears. If you are flying at faster than minimum sink speed, pull on some brakes and slow down to minimum sink. At this point you wait. If the thermal is not big enough for you to stay in the lift for at least a few seconds, there's no point in turning in it. If after a few seconds you are still in lift, start a turn keeping your speed slow, but not too slow. Most thermals have strong lift near the center, so if you feel the glider being turned in one direction as you enter the thermal, you want to turn in the other direction, towards a stronger core which is lifting more strongly on one wing. The general rule of flattening your bank angle when flying into increasing lift and steepening and thus tightening your turn when flying into decreasing lift will usually help you to center your circle in the strongest lift. This process of mapping the thermal and centering your turn in the strongest lift is not something you do once but something you do continuously because the thermal is always changing. Also, most thermals are not textbook models with concentric bands of stronger lift towards the center. Some thermals have multiple areas of strong lift and you may find that a triangular or oval or rectangular path gives you the most time spent in the strongest rising air. How small a radius of turn you fly in a thermal also depends on the distribution of lift. You need a steeper bank angle to turn in a smaller radius, and the steeper your bank angle, the higher your sink rate. If the thermal strength increases very rapidly towards the center, you may achieve a faster climb rate with a steep banked small radius turn. If the thermal strength is more gradually distributed, you will climb better with a shallower, larger radius turn. How you thermal in the presence of others is called thermaling etiquette. It is more than good manners though, it can mean life or death. So a few rules to heed are, number one, the first glider in a thermal sets the direction of circling. All gliders entering the thermal thereafter should ordinarily circle in the same direction. Two, the lower glider has the right of way. The reason is that he can't see you and you can see him. If he is climbing into you, get out of the way and let him go by. 3. Fly circles of a size appropriate to accommodate the number of gliders at or near your altitude. You can't go around flying rectangles, triangles, and ovals in a thermal with other pilots, because that's not what they expect. You also can't fly a tight circle in the middle of a core if there are two other paragliders at your altitude, because there won't be room for them. By the same token, in a large thermal you should not fly your circles in such a way as to conflict with others. In fact, same direction circles with different centers can cause more potential near misses than opposite direction circles. 4. Weaker thermals may drift horizontally faster than they climb, and even though gliders may be circling in the same direction, if they are at different altitudes the circles will not be concentric. In some cases, you may need to adjust your turn radius to avoid conflicts. In extreme cases, it may work best to circle in the opposite direction. 5. Keeping all this in mind, it is imperative to look around and make eye contact. Let other pilots know that you see them. Make your moves deliberate so that they can see what you intend to do. Telegraph your intentions by crossing your legs to set the weight shift. 6. If you're uncomfortable, get out. Flying in a crowded thermal is an advanced skill. If you're not up to it, go find another thermal.
When the prevailing wind meets a ridge at near right angles to the face of the ridge, the air is forced up over the top creating a band of rising air in front of and above the ridge. On days when the lift is just strong enough to allow soaring flight, you will want to maximize the lift by minimizing your rate of descent. This speed is slower than the speed for maximum glide angle and for most gliders requires braking to around the shoulder level. If the wind is not perfectly straight into the ridge, your initial turn after launching should be towards the wind so that you can minimize your ground speed while you are closer to the terrain. Ridge soaring often requires flying in close proximity to the terrain while flying slowly, which is potentially dangerous. When ridge soaring, you are normally flying in more crowded conditions, since everyone is constrained to the same lift band. The ridge soaring pilot needs to be intimately familiar with the rules for flying in traffic and needs to be able to control his glider without thinking about what he is doing, so that he can concentrate on working cooperatively in the traffic and staying in the lift band. You must stay in the lift band which follows the ridge line so your ground track is perpendicular to the wind direction and your flight heading needs to be angled into the wind. The actual angle of the flight heading required depends on the speed of the wind. You must also stay in the lift band when turning to reverse your direction along the ridge, which may require you to drift back slightly towards the ridge before you turn, if the radius of your ground track during the turn would otherwise carry you out far enough in front of the ridge to be out of the lift band. The equivalent of thermal etiquette in ridge soaring is knowing and following the rules of the ridge. These are a variation of standard aircraft right-of-way rules adapted to the special concerns of flying along a ridge. 1. When approaching another glider head-on, give way to the right to pass left to left as opposing cars do on a U.S. highway. This means that the pilot with the ridge on his left passes to the outside of an oncoming pilot. This also means that the pilot with the ridge on his right has the right of way since he may not be able to alter course to his right. 2. Make all turns away from the ridge. 3. Visually clear all turns prior to starting the turn. 4. Look around, make eye contact, and show your intentions by making your moves deliberate. 5. Try not to overtake another glider. Technically, the proper method is to pass to the inside, but if the other glider drifts inward, you can be in trouble. When you are following another glider, you must anticipate where and when he will turn and plan your flight path so as to minimize interference with each other or causing either glider to exit the lift band too far. If you are well behind another glider, it will have completed its turn and come back in against the ridge before you meet. In this case, you should obey the rule and alter course to your right, passing to the outside. Then ease in against the ridge in preparation for your turn. This can be especially troubling when flying in light conditions with the ridge on your left. Both gliders want to hug the ridge as much as possible to stay in the small lift band, but if the trailing glider alters his course so far away from the ridge that the leading glider can reverse his turn inside of him, then he may well lose the lift altogether. In this situation, you should instead follow his flight path and therefore violate the rule by passing inside him as he passes through the 180 degree portion of his turn and begins to come back towards you. If you are the trailing glider, plan ahead as you near the end of the ridge and decide ahead of time how you want the exchange to go, whether you will pass inside or outside of the reversing glider. The best way to communicate is to establish and maintain eye contact and make crisp, deliberate maneuvers during the critical decision period.